was all ready to be hypercritical of this thing because who needs a crank in a game console? I've got tons of controllers and never once have I looked at one and been like, you know what this thing needs? One of these. The crank doesn't even charge the device. It might look like one of those hand cranked radios, but it doesn't act like one at all. But even with all that, this might be one of the best designed handhelds ever created. And I don't even ever really use the crank. I still think the crank is pretty stupid. We have to look past the gimmick here for a second. This console's look was designed by Teenage Engineering, who makes some of the most beautiful, fun, well-designed stuff. That stuff also just happens to be pretty pricey. This thing follows the same sort of design philosophy, but a lot of what makes this thing a technical marvel is its software. The hardware is pretty, but the software is even prettier. The UI is as minimal as it can be, with animations that inject a ton of character into the experience and never get in the way of what you're trying to do. Now, this ain't the cutest damn thing I've ever seen. This thing is a development machine. It was built mostly with developers in mind. But that doesn't mean that you can't have fun with it too. I'll say the same thing that I say to Mario Maker deniers. I've got hundreds of hours in Mario Maker, and I've only ever built like two levels. The rest of the time I've been playing Mario Maker, I've been enjoying other people's creations. You see what I'm getting at? The Playdate makes it super easy to put games onto. Itch.io has a whole directory for Playdate games. Most of them are free, and the ones that aren't cost one or two dollars. To install a game onto the Playdate, make sure your device is registered and the Wi-Fi is connected. It should be, because that's part of the setup process. Go to play.date, yes, that's a website. Go to account, and then go to sideload. Anything you put here will show up on the Playdate under its games list, available for download. These games are all really tiny, so the downloads are super quick. My largest game is 60 megabytes. I think the device holds four gigabytes, and you can see I have a lot of games on here and I barely scratched any of that. I know the download system sounds like a boring piece of throwaway information, but it's kind of one of the Playdate's best features. I would love it if more consoles picked up something like this. Imagine if your Steam Deck could sideload games in a similar way. Yeah, you could do that with Steam games. That's normal, we've had stuff like that for a long time, but imagine if you could do that with Linux stuff. You could just sideload stuff from your computer and it automatically downloads to the device. Okay, so I'm sure that there is a way to do that because it's Linux and there's a way to do everything in Linux, but it would definitely be easier. It was just baked into the system already, like it is here. This video is sponsored by Incogni. Hey, what's up? Hey, so you know how you kind of signed me up for things and I told you not to do it, but you kind of just do it anyway? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Be honest with me. Have you been signing me up for one of your shady sites recently? No, why? Because that guy's been following me around. It's really freaking me out. Okay, that's weird because we're in an apartment right now. I know. Okay, I could fix this with Incogni. Incogni? Incogni helps protect your privacy and take your personal data off the internet. They'll reach out to scummy data brokers on your behalf and get your personal data removed so it won't be used and sold to these shady companies anymore. It takes just three steps. Create an account, grant Incogni the right to act on your behalf, and let them get to work. Watch as they scrub tons of data brokers for your info and rip it all down. You can give it a try for yourself at incogni.com slash wolfden or use the link in the description below and use code wolfden for a full 20% off. Wow, Incogni's like really effective. Too effective. Okay, 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 all right, all right. Thank you. That's fine, thank We're you. Good. Thanks. That's enough. Thank you very much. That's enough. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. One of the first things I wanted to do with this thing was put Game Boy games on here. Ever since I laid eyes on this thing for the first time, I said, God, that size, that screen, and that button layout would be perfect for some Game Boy games. And I'm happy to report there are two options for Game Boy emulators on here. There's Game Kid and there's Playboy. I think Game Kid runs a little better. 
and they give you options to show the frames per second, and there's also sound if you want. The problem is, it plays games slowly. Unfortunately, this device isn't a great Game Boy emulator, as much as I would like it to be. It would be fine if you wanted to play an RPG like Pokemon, but anything that requires reaction time might start to drive you crazy. I have to say, this is pretty agonizing too. If Tetris is all that you want to play, somebody ported that natively. It's called Playtris, so just play that. It runs great. Putting the Game Kid emulator on here was super simple. I followed Ulflat's video, which basically boils down to sideload Game Kid, put this thing in USB drive mode, stick it into your computer, and put your ROMs in this directory. And, and that's it. Again, this thing is made with developers in mind, so doing stuff like this is super simple to do. I hope that as more people get their hands on this, emulation becomes more viable. I would love to see more systems on this thing, but I'd also be more than happy with just Game Boy as long as it ran at real time. For now, believe it or not, I'm having more fun with native Playdate games. The Playdate does come with games, but that's one of my biggest gripes with the device. It comes with two games, Casual Birder and Whitewater Wipeout. And they're like, all right, games. Casual Birder has you using the crank to focus a camera as you take pictures of various birds. It's pretty cute. Whitewater Wipeout is pretty self-explanatory. You just wanna kind of stay on the wave. They're cool little demos that show off the crank, but it's nothing really innovative and certainly not anything that'll hold your interest for too long. They feel kind of like game jams. The Playdate will unlock two new games for you to play every Monday. You don't get games as they come out, you accumulate games over time. So I think one of the best examples of the crank mechanic is time travel adventures. They showed it off a lot in marketing for this thing. I suggest if you get one of these things, you play time travel adventures. But you can't play time travel adventures until week two of having this thing. Isn't that stupid? I kind of get the crank. Oh. It is surprisingly responsive. Seeing things react to your motion is pretty cool. I think I'm more impressed by this screen though. It looks like an e-ink screen, but it's super responsive. Most of these games only run at 30 frames per second. The device is only capable of 50, but for some reason, animations always look so smooth to me. It's a 400 by 240 pixel screen, but it's super pixel dense because the screen is so tiny. It feels pretty high resolution. I guess I'm just used to the Game Boy's screen. Speaking of which, a Game Boy's screen is two bits of color, which means that each pixel can be one of four different colors, green, 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 and off which I guess is also green. The Playdate screen is only one bit of color, which means that each individual pixel can either be on or off, and that's it. Despite this, the designers of the Playdate and also developers have been able to use the high pixel density to create some awesome halftone effects, creating the illusion of gradients of gray. The pixel art on this thing is some of the best I've ever seen. One of the best examples is a game called Island. This was one of the $2 itch.io games. It was one of the highest rated games on there, and rightfully so. It's one of the best experiences I've had playing a game all year. And it's not my type of game at all. It's sort of like a primitive RPG puzzle game. You go from point A to point B, get an item that unlocks something in point A, and so on. And then there's puzzles around. But there's some interesting and unique puzzles, and the artwork and the environments are spectacular. It had me engaged the whole time, even if it was only an hour long. And you know what? That game didn't even use the crank once. There's even a part in the game where you have to crank a crank. I pulled out the crank in anticipation and the game doesn't even let you use it. Oh, you mean I didn't have to crank? Yeah, the, the one opportunity to use the crank and I didn't have to use it. Cool. My second little bugaboo with this thing is the screen. I'm sure they're sick of hearing this by now, but man, it's 2022. This thing needs a front light or a backlight or something. It's not charming to play once the sun goes down. 
It wasn't cool back in the 90s to play like this, and it's not cool now. They say the screen has a super reflective back, but it's not enough to see it well in a somewhat dark room. In fact, for a lot of the shots in this video, I have a light mounted to the top of the camera so you can see the screen better. Even some of the shots that were shot in broad daylight. You can also see it right here. I have a light shining over there. That's pretty bright. If I just turn it like this, there it goes. Goodbye screen. <laughs> but the simplicity of this screen also contributes to its charming design. Since it draws such little power, it can always be on. The idle screen is a clock. Pressing the lock button twice will unlock it. And look at this cute ass animation. And the responsiveness. It could be idle for days and always respond with the same quickness. They say the device can stay idle for up to two weeks. I heard that that estimate is a bit of an exaggeration, but it could last for a really long time. Sometimes I don't even lock the screen anymore. I just leave it on, on my desk, just like this for hours. It took me a while to warm up to this thing. I love some of the pop in and pop out creations that indie developers have made for this thing. I love how easy it is to play their creations, but I'm hoping for a little bit more. Barely anybody has a play date right now. So after just a couple of days of playing around with this thing, I feel like I've seen everything there is to be seen on the itch.io play date directory. I'm looking for platformers. I want some nice indie platformers on this thing. There are like two on itch.io right now and they are not great. There's great stuff on itch, but there's also a lot of little jokey things, which is totally fine. The first two times you try one, then it gets old real quick. What a cool joke, what a fun, what a cool joke. It's such a simple little guy. It's less than a centimeter thick. It's thinner than my iPhone and about half the size. I want so badly to put this thing in my pocket, but I'm afraid I'm gonna scratch it. So I don't wanna take it anywhere. I regret that I didn't get that $30 flip cover. If you pre-order it with the device, it's only $20, but that thing doesn't cover the sides. I did get a couple of passport holders because I wanted to see which one fits it the best, but they might be a tad too big. Look at that, look at that flop. The last thing I got was this key fob case that somebody suggested in my Twitch chat. This is a good size. It's still a little bit big though. My biggest problem with this case is that this blocks all Wi-Fi signals, so it's not gonna get any over the air updates. And also, I'm not sure this is gonna be good for the screen. I'm worried it might scratch it. I'll link that one in the description so you can get it if you want. I want so badly for this to be an everyday carry. If I played Pokemon more, this could possibly be an everyday carry. If this had better Game Boy emulation, it would absolutely be an everyday carry. And if it had more games that could hook me, it would be an everyday carry. I really hope that it catches on, that they can produce more devices and get it in more hands, and that people develop more games for it. It's just so fun to play. In case you haven't noticed, I'm a hardware guy, and something about this piece of hardware is so charming and fun to play. And it's not even the prank. It's just a cool piece of tech. I'm excited to discover more of what it can do, and I hope it keeps people interested enough where we can start seeing some real cool on here. I think $180 is a reasonable price, but it's unfortunate that if you order one now, you won't be seeing your play date until 2023. That might not be worth $180. Developing for this thing's really easy. You can do it in your web browser on their website. It's pretty awesome. I kind of wish they would open up the development kit to people who don't own a play date. I know that kind of defeats the purpose and it means you can play games without owning a play date, but not a lot of people have them and I want more games on here. And it's gonna be a while till more people get their hands on this. So 
open up the development kit to more people. People watching this, then they can make it. Then they can make the games. They can do the work for you. Sell it for 10 bucks. I mean, sell it for cheap then. I don't know. Get more people to develop for this. I I'm sick of waiting for people to get their hands on it. Uh, maybe they're getting their hands on them now. I mean, it took me a while to get mine. Anyway, what do you guys think about the play date? Does this make you more interested in it now? Were you looking at this and you were like, why do I need a game console with a crank? Is this, am I gonna be able to put emulators on here? How many fishing games can I play on one device? Leave it in a comment below. Add me on Twitter. I need all this other social media garbage. And what itch.io games or what games in general on the play date should I try out? Give me some suggestions. I, it's easier if you add me on Twitter. I mostly respond to them. We got new videos here all the time. Also, twitch.tv slash wolfden. I'm gonna be live tonight. I don't know what I'm gonna be doing, but you can talk to me there too. We can have a nice little back and forth conversation. Of course, the most important things that you can do to help support this channel are just to subscribe right here. You can turn on notifications if you wanna know when every single new video goes live. YouTube's only gonna tell you the ones it thinks you're interested about. It's not gonna tell you all of them. I talked about a laptop the other day. You think the algorithm's gonna tell you about that? Also, you can share this video with a friend. A friend who's maybe interested in development. Maybe they're just interested in tiny little devices they can play Game Boy games on. Thank you guys very much. Have yourself a good week.